Hi guys, this is gsnmount.com and I'm here with the Samsung Galaxy A3 2016 for a full review. It's a familiar face because we've already reviewed the Galaxy A5 and A7 2016 and it's potentially the best looking sub 5 inch phone I've seen lately. It was launched in December 2015 and you can find it on Amazon priced at around $279. It's supposed to be an entry level phone but seeing how it has some very good aspects we may even call it the lower mid range. So time to discuss the design. It's a typical Samsung Galaxy A 2016 edition and that means we have a pretty sturdy metal frame at the same time two glass panels glass at the back and glass at the front both of them are 2.5d gorilla glass 4 panels as far as i know and uh, other than that i should mention that the diagonal has increased the galaxy a3 the previous version had a 4.5 inch diagonal the galaxy a3 the new one 4.7 inch diagonal this time it has a solid build it has a good grip and it's very very easy to use with a single hand with absolutely no problem even if even if you have t-rex hands or big hands it's a narrow phone and its back side feels like a bit of a fingerprint magnet as i said before 2.5d glass panel at the back and at the front has a premium build and if you're looking for measurements well we have them 7.3 millimeters in thickness compared to the predecessor's 6.9 millimeters and 132 grams of weight compared to the predecessor's 110 grams still you will not feel the jump of 20 grams it feels light and at the same time solid i mentioned before that it has a metal frame but this frame is kind of prone to being dented in case you hit it on tough objects we got comfy buttons including the home button, power button and volume, volume buttons. All of them are comfy and respond to your commands very nicely. So overall a great design, no objections here and the phone comes in black, white or gold. Time to discuss the screen, it's a super AMOLED panel with a 4.7 inch diagonal and a resolution of 1280 over 720 pixels. It has narrow bezels and it's an upgrade from the Galaxy A3's 4.5 inch with a resolution of 540 over 960 pixels and now let's see the video app which will enable us to see a test video and judge the performance of the screen there are no extra options here and the screen itself offers very vivid colors deep blacks and good brightness plus wide viewing angles it's also pretty good when it comes to the contrast even in full sunlight now let's have a look at the pixels because we also have those here we check out the pixels of the screen under the microscope and let's see what came out of that so this is the pental matrix arrangement we're so familiar with on samsung phones with amoled screens and we also measured the brightness and achieved a pretty impressive 504 lux units it's actually great it's very close to the galaxy a5 2016 that has 505 lux and exactly the same as the Galaxy A7 2016 that also has 504 lux. It beats the iPhone SE, Galaxy S5 and Huawei P8 which is excellent in my book. And now we also have special settings for the special screen. We got brightness, we have font, screen timeout, smart stay and screen mode that includes adaptive display, AMOLED cinema, AMOLED photo and basic. This one oversaturates, this one is more realistic and this one even more realistic. So overall a great display, now it's time to talk about the actual hardware. We start off with the CPU which is an Exynos 7580 quad core unit, a 28 nanometer processor clocked at up to 1.5 GHz. The GPU offered here is a Mali T720 MP2, we also get 1.5 GB of RAM, 16 GB of storage of which 10.8 are available to the user and a micro SD card slot with support for up to uh, 128 GB. Okay, so this phone has a fast and fluid user experience and interface. I tried opening up as many apps as I could, they start up fast and there's no lag here. And it also does pretty fine in games, as you can see we played Vector 2 and also the famous Riptide GP2, our usual benchmark game. And it worked swell. And apparently the level loaded very fast, very nice looking water here. The controls seem pretty responsive. And here we are at the start line. So far so good, excellent graphics, nice texture and no frame has been dropped 
in this experience. Okay, we're done with the gaming aspect, time to go to the benchmarks that everyone wants to learn about. So let's have a go. In Quadran, first things first, we have a pretty good score of 14,782, which means we beat the Huawei Honor 7 and Sony Xperia M5, while in Antutu 6, we have this score here, which means we even beat the Galaxy A7 2016, and the 3D part of this benchmark is very good, even that's okay, it's placed on the 26th spot among all the phones we've ever tested, and that's a good thing. In 3D Mark, it's a modest result, placing us between the Huawei P8 Lite and the Lenovo Fab Plus. Still, performance is good, and we also measure the temperature, so during the gaming, we reached as much as 34.6 degrees Celsius after 15 minutes of Riptide GP2, so no overheating, and after uh, the benchmark GFX Bench, 34.2 degrees Celsius, so no overheating again. Now let's talk about the battery. So we're getting a 2300 mAh lithium ion unit. That's quite the upgrade from the Galaxy A3's 1900 mAh battery and on paper we should be getting about 58 hours of audio playback or 14 hours of video playback. Speaking of playback, let's see how the device did in our test. So in continuous HD video playback in a loop, 12 hours and 2 minutes, which is actually excellent. We even managed to beat the Galaxy Note 5, iPhone 6 and Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. So while we're doing good, in the PC mark test we also did good, we did great. We surpassed the Galaxy A7 2016, thanks to the 8 hour and 45 minute duration. We once again beat the Galaxy Note 5 and even the Galaxy S7. Not only that, but the charging is also very good, 1 hour and 43 minutes, and this is superior to the LG, LG Nexus 5X, Galaxy S7 and Huawei Honor 7. There is also a special segment for the battery optimization and usage, here we go. So we got battery usage here, we got app optimization here, and power saving restricting CPU performance, screen brightness and frame rate and more. And finally, ultra power saving mode goes to a black and white user interface and only opts for the basic features. Overall, a great, great battery. Time to discuss the acoustics. So on the bottom side of the phone, we got the speaker here and the typical musical player offers a ton of options like play speed, music auto off and smart volume. And then we got sound alive with the usual equalizer options related to genres the knobs for extra bass, treble or instrument or vocal, 7 custom channels to tweak and frequencies, 3D, bass, clarity and concert, as well as adapt sound, sound alive plus, tube amp, so all the famous options are here. Now if you want to listen to some actual tunes, well here we go. And now some conclusions, we have a loud and clear sound, an ok bass, no distortion and good guitar. And we also use the decibel meter to measure this performance and achieve 84.7 decibels at both the front and the back, very good value. It's exactly the same value as the Galaxy S7 and we beat the Galaxy S7 Edge and Huawei P9. Now the headphones, let's see those. They're typical for a Galaxy A series model. They're shaped like this, they have these comfy buds, a pretty big wire that's pretty prone to tangling up, a big and uh, easily usable remote. What can I say? They're comfy, they're very very loud, they have a perfect bass and offer good sound isolation. And thanks to the headphones we can also access the FM radio app that sadly takes quite a while to scan stations and I did not like that. Okay, let's get rid of these headphones for now. And check out the camera. So let's discuss the camera here. We have a 13 megapixel back shooter with an LED flash, f1.9 aperture, no optical stabilization. And at the front, we have a 5 megapixel shooter with f1.9 aperture. So 13 megapixels here, 5 here. And you can actually fire up the camera very fast by double tapping or pressing the home button. That's the typical user interface and the focus is a bit on the slow side takes a while to do it 
we do have a pretty fluid zoom and picture taking is I'd say fast okay other than that typical Samsung UI we have effects we got the timer flash options resolution options and finally the settings you can film up to full HD grid lines location tags voice control are all here and the main capture modes are auto pro panorama continuous shot HDR and night with pro also offering extra options like white balance ISO exposure and metering so that's it in a nutshell and now it's time to go to the gallery so let's have a glance at said gallery and here we are with over 90 pictures I have to say first that it was a sunny day that also had some spotty periods with clouds and we registered some pretty good colors and I mean realistic colors here and there was some lack of clarity every once in a while like this shot which shows some very blurry flowers it was a bit hard to focus especially during close-ups and uh, we have some samples here that you'll see in the full text review other than that we did achieve okay close-ups of flowers but after a series of attempts this is an example of good hdr so here it's a white mess it's actually a set of clouds that are clearly highlighted when you use the hdr mode so that's good we also zoomed in onto this cross monument and the details were quite good once we got the camera to really focus on the monument once again a zoom test with pretty solid quality the selfies were a bit underwhelming because they felt a bit washed out and very blurry don't take for granted what you see here you should see them on the pc in order to figure out that they're a bit of a letdown we have quite a few blurry shots compared to our expectations but the colors remained generally good we also did a panorama with a resolution that was rather modest 7376 over 640 pixels in landscape shots well the details were not good the trees became one compact and green mess and speaking of green i have to mention that uh, somehow this camera sensor does not capture the green hue in a realistic way sadly the quality is good when you focus ok and you're in the shade like it happened here so this one has good clarity and good colors nice close up and once again good colors because it was a very shady area without too much clouds and without without too many clouds and without too much sun okay and then we get to the last shots this one with the fountain somehow everything got artificial here have a look at this green it doesn't feel realistic one bit and that's a problem in my book overall it's not a very convincing camera during the day even for such a low price but during the night I would have to say that was it was rather okay we have big street light halos and when the flash is lacking so is the quality but when the flash is on clarity is good and the colors are quite okay and when the night mode is triggered well the results are let's say surprising so this is what happens thanks to the night mode things get a bit uh, yellowish but at the same time the clarity is very good and so are the details okay a few more shots good close up at night so the flash has to be remembered here as a good thing i know it's not the galaxy a5 this one but i wanted a bit more from the galaxy a 2016 and it didn't quite deliver so i'm a bit underwhelmed and feel that it's slightly below the huawei honor 4x if you really want a comparison and uh, now it's time for the video section let's see how the videos look like and we start off with those taken during the day you have to know that this camera shoots mp4 video in full hd and uh, at 30 frames per second 17 mega per second bitrate the microphone was quite good focus was also nice and the colors were realistic the image was a bit shaky and when zooming in there was quite a bit of detail loss in the last video i noticed there were problems with the hue of green totally unrealistic it feels like it's rendered or painted not real green and during the nighttime video capture the flash once again saved the day so we achieved good colors great lighting exposure and clarity overall it's a modest and average camera even for the price tag applied by samsung here and it's clearly below the samsung galaxy a5 2016 now if you want to talk about something else 
we could talk about the web browser. So let's load up gsnon.com and see how that is handled. As you can see, it's a pretty slow poke browser, but in the meantime, we get some fluid scrolling and the virtual keyboard is quite comfy. It has also has a numeric row. And the benchmark associated to the browser here are also, let's say, mediocre, not more than that. Now it's time to discuss the connectivity and for that I'm going to have to go to the settings area to have a glance at the options available here. So this phone comes with a dual SIM version or a single SIM version. Both of them have nano SIM card slots. It supports 4G LTE of the TDD and FDD kind. It has ANT plus support for fitness devices. There is a micro USB 2.0 port right here. And we also have GPS, GLONASS, there is no MHL. We do have Wi-Fi 802.11, BGM in the 2.4 GHz band, there's no A or AC Wi-Fi or 5 GHz, but we do have Wi-Fi Direct, Bluetooth 4.1 and NFC. As far as the calling is concerned, we get a speed dial feature, we get video calls and the calls are loud, clear, have a good signal and an excellent microphone. Now it's time to discuss about the software and we're dealing with Android, let's see what version, Android 5.1.1 Lollipop which feels a bit dated right now, it has TouchWiz on top and this means among others a dedicated home screen for Flipboard which is of course optional. If you want multitasking you got a carousel but there's no split screen like the other Samsung mid-range models. Of course the screen is smaller so there's no need for that. We have a colorful UI that feels a bit glossy and looks rather elegant. If you keep the home screen pressed, you got wallpapers, widgets and themes and the themes come with their own store. And then the widgets, well, they're one of the best looking in the Android ecosystem. They're transparent, glossy and excellently rendered. Now in the drop down area, you can find the quick settings and notifications, if there are any, and of course the main settings. Connectivity, multimedia and such, motions and gestures, only smart alert. Then we got the lock screen and security. There is no fingerprint scanner, even though the home button makes you look like that through this ring around it. Well, there is no fingerprint scanner. We have an easy mode option here and themes again, accessibility, and that's about it. Now, when it comes to the pre-installed apps, we counted them all and we're just a bit below the threshold of bloatware. So there are 39 pre-installed apps and among them we find Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and OneNote, as well as Skype. We got the Google Suite, as usual, and we have the Smart Manager, which comes in handy if you want to clean up some resources. And then we've got S Planner, S Voice, and Galaxy Apps as the Samsung App Store, an alternative for the Play Store. Okay, so in conclusion, not much bloater here, but pretty close to it. And uh, now it's time to talk about the verdict for the Samsung Galaxy A3 2016. So on the pro side, we have a bright screen, actually very bright screen considering the price. Great, great battery. It's an elegant and compact phone. It doesn't suffer from lag, runs games okay. It has a pretty loud speaker at the bottom. Good headphones, also very good price. And on the con side, well, uh, here we're dealing with a device that has a metal frame that's pretty easy to dent. The camera at the back and at the front, wait, well, they both feel rather unimpressive. The fact that we're lacking Android Marshmallow is a bit of a bummer for me and for all users. Also, Samsung could have included the fingerprint scanner here. I doubt that the cost would have jumped too much. And finally, um, in spite of this button look, the lack of fingerprint scanner is a bummer. So that's about it. Not many flaws as you can see. Basically, aside from the camera, nothing is major here. And even the camera, when it comes to the low light capture and using the flash, it handled them, let's say, good. So overall, the phone stands out through design, battery, acoustics and display, which makes it a multimedia phone for the young people, especially since it's good looking enough to be cool for them. It's a great small phone, one of the best batteries you'll find on a sub 5 inch handset and of course one of the brightest displays in the same area. Ignore the camera and you got a solid multimedia consumption device, Galaxy A3 2016 here at gsn.com. Bye bye!